Good morning, guys. Wonderful this morning when I took my walk. Might get rained on. Summary of our live stream panel that we had yesterday. Um, Clarence uh, joined by comment. He didn't have enough bandwidth to do video. Uh, but we also had Robert and Alfredo. Lots of fun. And a few nuggets came out of there. It's always good when you talk between each other. You'll come up with new ideas. Satisfies this engineering brain, I'll tell you. <laughs> so the panel was wonderful, guys. Now, yeah, it almost lasted you know, 11 hours. But I think if you were having meetings with an engineer and such, you probably would go through about the same amount of back and forth uh, in order to satisfy various questions. Um, but it was enlightening for me as well. And when Lynn joined us, she was able to share a few more numbers and stuff. And I believe she shared online uh, the fluctuation in, co in our costs. Uh, so keep in mind that when we started our house build, the inflation had kicked in quite a bit. Lynn was kind of shocked, right? But by the time it finished, that inflation had recoiled. It was no longer an issue. Yeah, the roof, we actually paid 220000 220000 Yeah, 220000 pesos. 230000 Right, because we choose to have like two, like the thickness of the angle bar and, and the, the size. And the size. Yeah. 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 We choose two by one, no, two by one eight or something, like, or... No, yeah, the, thick, one, the thickness was millimeters. But it's, it's thick. It's yeah. not that stuff you might use for your fence or whatever. Right. right. So, yeah, we choose that way. And our rebars, regarding the rebars, the 10 mm, there was a time that we even paid 205 per piece mm -hmm. because it was expensive at that time. And then it went down to 185, 175, 165 to 155. So, you know, was there any purpose for us to give you costs on doing our pillars and our beams and our pour and all of this type of thing? No. What you guys are interested in from our vlog standpoint is a bottom line, which we gave you, roughly 1.2 million. And then we spent a lot of time, like where did that money go? Like when we're just talking big chunks. And, you know, when you look at the roof alone, that was a pile of money. But it satisfied Lynn that those sea purlins were not going to cut it. And, you know, what are the odds you're getting hit, is, hit square on like Cebu got hit? Okay, so if you're going to do the sea purlins, you do the sea purlins and you weigh it out and you make your assessment. But, but that wasn't good enough for Lynn. Okay, I understand. She's lived in that country. She's experienced it straight on. Now, I just say, hey, let's get an airline ticket. We're out of here. <laughs> you know, but... You know, that's how, you know, we deal with things. So, you know, we dealt with a lot of that kind of stuff. But here's the kicker. Lynn put the numbers up, or to me, I put the numbers on. You guys can watch that video. And so the panel and I, we really massaged those numbers and went around and around in circles a lot. So, you know, I've already done videos on Starkin and the amount of its contact time versus the LightStrong product at 60 by 30. I think we worked it out. It was roughly two more rows of panel to go in. So if it took us one day to do 60 by 30s, Starkin is definitely going to take longer. But then now we talk about Dr. J at 60 by 60 panels, or sorry, not panels. Let's get into it, blocks. 60 by 60 blocks. Your contact time on a regular straight wall is half of what it is with light strong i probably not but let's put it in a different context the 60 by 30s were 155 but the 60 by 60s are 180 based on today's prices price is subject to change <laughs> um so again the context right um the time that you would give up for more contact time, uh, savings in the actual cost of the block. However, again, you're looking at how much time am I saving on my build? One of the main major reasons that Lynn and I did 
AAC was time. If we did a hollow block project, I will guarantee you that we would have got to a certain stage, locked it up, gone do what we do, because we're doing six and six, and, or if we were living there a whole year, taking a long break <laughs> before we got back at doing all of the rest of the skim coats on a standard CHB project. Um, no, no. And I, I don't even know why they call it CHB, guys. I'm not sure how much concrete is in it. There can't be a heck of a lot, if any. I think it's just a compression mud. <laughs> um, though curing time does help, but it's a long cure before it stiffens up enough that even resembles what I would consider a cinder block. So there was a nugget that came out of that conversation and everything and Robert almost had it but I had the uh, th had the floor at the po at the moment and that was we took a chip out of one of our inside walls on a outside corner and the guys were moving in the bamboo furniture boom he hit the wall I thought it was just the wall but he actually took a chip out of the corner and almost at that same breath I was saying well why oh drywall corner bead Guys, we looked at all that stuff. <laughs> Why didn't I think of putting that on? No different than putting mud on a wall. Just got to have a wide enough trowel to make sure that you don't kind of get that you know, weird line when drywallers do a half-assed job. Um, yeah, why didn't I think of that? Robert, boom, I was just thinking of that. <laughs> um, so again, we had lots of good back and forth. Now, on to the tip-up panels. Again, I've always said, and, and this holds true with the blocks themselves, you, I really feel that you need to plan your design tight to be 60 times tables and 60 times tables plus a 30. And now if you're talking tip-up panels, they're all 60s. Why am I saying plus 30? Because you could order 60 by 60s and then you can still tongue and groove the whole way up cut it in half as we did with the 60 by 30s and you are done and even if it's not quite right you can shave a little off we did a sample of doing 60 by 20 cutting it for 20s because we had to around a window so i took advantage of that and there's too much waste guys too much waste and so i'm so glad that we spent the extra time designing a house that worked on the 60 times tables or 60 times tables plus a 30. So you can get away with that. Now when it comes to your windows and doors, panels are also another upside then. So now you're going to cut across the uh, the 60 and now you can make a lentil to go across and da 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 all that stuff, right? But you will, as Clarence pointed out, uh, he's going to need a blend because he will also need some blocks. Uh, again, we're all taking, talking AAC here. He will need blocks to put above, fill above his windows, fill above his doors, that sort of thing. Um, once you put in the lentil. So there you go, guys. Uh, I mean, we talked about a lot of stuff. I really can't cover off everything that we did, obviously. Uh, but a great panel, great discussion. And it was great that we kind of got off track and then we came back on track and, and had a good, good meeting. Now, what I want to add is a nugget for the AAC tip-up panels. You know how I like the idea of putting my electrical in the slab first and then drilling through the AAC, but how would you do that with a panel? Lynn and I were talking about the panel and various things uh, because Lynn did join us for a little bit and it was interesting that I, would, I just, whatever reason, I thought of my mom's plug, electrical plug, in the floor and for a lamp, right, she's got a big great room and I thought to myself, Listen, Ken, in the Philippines, these guys will put plugs, one plug on a five, maybe even an eight meter wall. One, right? One. And so extension cords are all over the place. So why couldn't you just put a little stub up like this, cut up a square out on your tip up panel, tip your panel up, and then mark out your box, use your multi-tool, cut the box out, slip your box in, any adjustment, oversizing that you might need in, on, on the top or bottom. You could do that because you have to put a plate over top anyway. Now, add in the fact that maybe you want to put baseboards on 
because we have run into the rubber baseboards, just glue them on, right? Um, you could have your electrical up just above the baseboard. And again, it's all covered up. Similarly, with your water, just bring it up in the bathroom, have a notch out, and then in that case, because you've already got tiles gonna go on the wall, who cares? Chase the wall then. Put your grooves in, Bob's your uncle. Do not let them go chip, 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 chip. You have a multi-tool, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, or a worst case, you have an angle grinder and you make a mess and you throw a lot of dust up and all that sort of thing. And that's how you do your chase. So there you go, guys. That was kind of the, uh, the summary of our almost 11 hour talk. And like I say, not lost on me at all. I really appreciate the back and forth because again, Lynn and I, if we can lock in this land, we are seriously looking at doing another build this year. We won't be anywhere near as involved uh, because we have already got all that stuff dialed in on how to get things done and the timing of when we would realistically need to be back or just tell the guru. You're gonna to have to take three or four days off or a week off or whatever until we're ready to go again. I'm not worried about that now as much as before because these provincial crews, they want to stay home. They want to stay home, guys. And so, you know, think about that. They're not gonna go running off to the city. They've already got the competition with the city guys doing this kind of work. And so even if you have to take a week off, take the week off, Rest up, get your head squared away, and then get back to it. Or get the next set of instructions going for your foreman, and then you can go again. <laughs> uh, but I do agree with a lot of loggers out there. Boy, oh boy, if you can have a family member that is your foreman, lead hand, whatever, all the better. They are not, well, you should know them by now. <laughs> they are not going to screw you over. There we go, guys. Wonderful panel. Thanks to the guys. Alfredo, Robert, wonderful day. Thanks for popping in, Clarence, with your comments. Love it. Oh, and Kurt, you were there too. If I missed you, I apologize. Later, Gators.